really has to be at the core of our work, right? We have to be have a norm for continuous improvement and a belief that there's always opportunity for growth and change and development. And I think I would summarize or paraphrase, excuse me, a quote by Margaret Mead that says, a small group of committed people can make change in a positive way. And in fact, that's all that ever has. And so understanding the power that we have as educators of children who are some of the most privileged in the world and taking that understanding and turning it into a positive uh, sort of momentum for change and, uh, the, and, and, and using the energy that comes with that understanding, I think uh, will impact uh, outcomes, lifelong outcomes for children. I think when we talk about creating readiness for change, we're talking about uh, building relationships. And the first thing is that people feel welcomed. Uh, they feel that they're a part of something that's bigger than themselves. And ideally, we get to know them and we see their strengths. And when you have a community of people, creating readiness for change is engaging the strengths of the community. And finally, it's supporting their autonomy, their choice, their voice in moving forward. And that's really engagement or autonomy support. And without that, it's pretty hard uh, to move policy or, um, or practices forward, at least new developments. Positive change is inspired by valuing everyone's voice, by looking for the voice and val valuing those perspectives. Um, certainly we know that those who have sometimes the loudest voice oftentimes are the ones who can be that champion for change, but then it very much becomes their role to further that voice and champion all, all the causes and the voices that inspire that global change. Thank you.